Father in heaven, bless us throughout this midday power surge. Revive us, reform us, we pray, as we prepare for your Sabbath, the coming crisis, and your soon return. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Greetings, salutations, welcome to this Midday Power Surge, Friday, December 18th, 2020. This is your spiritual oasis on this pilgrim journey. Safe to Surf International, those of you who are joining us live, first-time viewers, also those who would join us hereafter, I greet you as strangers and pilgrims on this earth. Friends, this is the sixth day of the week, and when the sun sets, it's the Lord's Sabbath, and the seventh day of the week is still the Sabbath, and the Lord is coming soon. Get ready, get ready, get ready, remain ready. Get others ready before it is too late. Let's get right into the subject matter at hand. Friends, I have some solemn things to share with you today. Take a look at this. Here we have it, friends, fresh off the press. Daily Mail, December 18th, 2020. The headline reads, U.S. VP becomes highest ranking member of government to receive the pestilence pan panacea. It's right there on the screen, my friends. And this presentation, one qualification, this is not in any way, shape, or form. The purpose is not to vilify the U.S. VP. It's not to castigate any other that I will address throughout this midday power surge. The primary purpose of this midday power surge, one, is to use current events as a tool to promulgate the everlasting gospel found in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 through verse 12. The second coming is pictured in verse 14 through verse 16. Throughout this presentation, you will receive doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness so that you, my friends, will become truly perfect unto all good works. This is the purpose, using current events to promulgate the everlasting gospel. I'm using the actual method of Jesus Christ. Take a look at this quotation. Christ's object lessons, page 405 says, Christ with his disciples is seated upon the Mount Olives. In full view is a dwelling house, lighted up brilliantly as if for some festive season. The light streams from the openings and an and an expectant company wait around, indicating that a marriage procession is soon to appear. As Christ sat looking upon the party that awaited, that waited for the bridegroom, Christ told his disciples the story of the ten virgins by their experience illustrating the experience of the church that shall live just before his second coming so what was the context that led to christ teaching the parable of the ten virgins found in matthew 25 the context was a current event was occurring a marriage was occurring and Christ used that current event to teach heavenly truths. Is that Christ's method? Oh yes. That's what we're doing today. Let's move on friends. Take a look at this. Again, it's clear. Watch live RT News. Watch live headline. US VP receives pestilence panacea and assures Americans of its safety. It says, 
He received the pestilence panacea live on air. For what purpose? To tell Americans it's safe and to build their confidence to accept the pestilence elixir. I hope you got that, my friends. And the question is, will U.S. leaders also lead the way in enforcing Sunday rest, Sunday worship by law? Will U.S. leaders also lead the way by worshiping on Sunday when it becomes the law of the land and persuade Americans to follow suit, worshiping on Sunday and renouncing God's seventh day Sabbath? I'm going to give you a scripture to confirm something. At the closing scene of Christ's earth ministry, it was the leaders who persuaded the people to say, reject Jesus, crucify Christ, and accept Barabbas. That's Matthew 27. Note it, my friends. Matthew 27. That's verse number 20 through verse number 22. And friends, bear in mind, bear in mind, we are told the pestilence is a result of climate change. It's right there on the screen. All right, friends. And what is the solution to combat the pestilence? We know what it is. An elixir. And now a U.S. leader, highest ranking, second to highest ranking, has led the way. Do you see where this is going? And what will be, my friends, the primary solution to combat climate change, to combat pestilences? It is Sunday worship by law. Will the leaders lead out and persuade the people to renounce God's seventh-day Sabbath and accept Sunday rest by law? Will this transpire? All right, friends. The doctrine, the prophecy, notice what this goes on to say. The Daily Mail article says, headline, U.S. VP becomes highest ranking member of government to receive pestilence panacea. Look at the bottom paragraph. This is what the U.S. VP said. I didn't feel a thing on live television as he received the pestilence panacea. I did not receive a thing. It went on. He said, it's safe. Have confidence in the pestilence nostrum. Have confidence in the pestilence panacea. My friends, do you know what came to my mind right here? I looked at how this leader is stating it's safe. I took it publicly. Since I took it, it's safe. Look at me. It's safe. Have confidence. Go ahead. Accept this panacea accept it my mind went to the beginning of this earth's history in the garden of eden watch this friends what and again this is not to lambast the usvp i'm giving you heavenly truths as in the natural so it will be in the spiritual do you remember god told adam and eve in genesis chapter 2 and verse number 17 of all of these you may freely eat because these foods are given to augment, to support, so you can retain health and life. Of all these, you may freely eat. But this one, the tree, the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, don't partake of it. In the day you partake of it, you shall surely die. What happened next, my friends? In Genesis chapter 3. Verse 1 through verse 4, what did Satan say to Eve? Look, Satan told Eve, I have eaten of the forbidden fruit. And look, I am alive. Look, I have not died. Look, I am healthy. I even am able to speak. Serpents couldn't speak. So now it's safe. Have confidence, Eve. And what happened? Eve partook of the forbidden. Look at this, my friends. There it is. Education. The book Education. Page 24, it says, Satan declared that he himself 
had eaten of the forbidden fruit and as a result had acquired the power of speech and that if they also would eat of it, Adam and Eve, if they also would eat of it, they would attain to a more exalted sphere of existence and enter a broader field of knowledge. Look at the second paragraph here, friends. It says, page 24, while Satan claimed to have received great good, underscore that, friends, great good by eating, of the forbidden tree he did not let it appear that by transgression he had become an outcast from heaven notice friends so so, so uh, how can we apply this today ah uh -huh, friends notice with the solutions plural to combat climate change to combat pestilences do you see it, friends? They will not tell you what the end result is going to be. Listen, second paragraph. Here was falsehood, so concealed under a covering of apparent truth that Eve infatuated, Eve flattered, Eve beguiled, Eve did not discern the deception. There it is, friends. She coveted what God had forbidden. She distrusted God's wisdom. She cast away faith, the key of knowledge. I want to show you something here, friends. Just as we are seeing, the US VP and others, I'll come to the others, who are taking and also stating they will take the pestilence nostrum publicly to create a sense of safety. And to persuade the people to accept it. Go ahead and do it. You see the parallels. A juxtaposition. Not a complete parallel. But you can see principles among both situations. Let me tell you something friends. We have the highest ranking member of America doing this publicly. Let me tell you something. Why did Satan use a serpent? The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 1, the serpent was the most subtle of all the beasts of the field. Satan did not use just any beast of the field. No, he went for the best actor. Understand that. In other words, Satan won an actor's award in Eden. And I'm not being facetious. He won the Grammy <laughs> because remember that serpent had a musical voice and Satan, Lucifer, was the chief musician in heaven. Yes, Satan won best actor. The serpent won an Oscar award. Satan won an Oscar award in heaven. Do you know who gave him the award? Eve. Then came Adam. Understand that, my friends. Satan had live television. The serpent was on live television in Eden. Do you see it, my friends? Huh. Look at this as I move on. It's not only the US VP. Look at this, Forbes.com. December 9, 2020. Headline reads, World leaders who say they will get pestilence Nostrum publicly to boost confidence. Red words at the bottom. They would take it publicly. And friends, I did not put in the slide all the world leaders. But you can go and take a look at the Force magazine. Move on. Ah, oh, friends, I had to deal with Jamaica. It says, you know where I'm from. Headline, the JamaicaObserver.com. It says, uh, ready for pestilence panacea, rolling up their sleeves. Look at that, friends. The two main parties on the island, JLP, Jamaica Labour Party, PNP, the People's National Party, Andrew Holness, the president, and we have former presidents, Mr. P.J. Patterson, Mr. Bruce Golden, Golding, it's there, my friends. 
And notice again, are you seeing parallels here? And remember what Satan did in Eden was spiritualism. You can disobey God's word, Eve, and not surely die. But Eve died. She became sick. My friends, the world became sick. The world experienced climate change for the first time. Hope you caught that. When Eve sinned, nothing happened apparently. But when Adam sinned, what happened, friends? The world changed. Nature changed. Climate change had something connected to it, putting something in the body. What? Did you catch that? Move on. Then we have americamagazine.org. December 15, headline, should the man of sin get the pestilence panacea first or last? You can decide that. That's not what I'm talking about, friends. Let me be clear. We must remonstrate. We must protest against the man of sin. That's clear, my friends. It's time. Not only that, what about our own institutions? Look at the screen. December 16th, Advent Health, an apparent SDA health institution. Advent Health team members receive pestilence panacea. I wonder why. Is it to also persuade the masses? It's safe to boost their confidence to go ahead and take it? Next, that's the East Coast. Swing now to the West Coast. Loma Linda University. Another SDA institution, Loma Linda University Health, Ad Health administers pestilence panacea to whom? To frontline workers against the pestilence. Are SDA among the frontline workers at Loma Linda University Health Institution? It's just a question, my friends, I'm asking. And the next question is, the next question is, will SDA churches begin also to promulgate? Will pastors begin rolling up their sleeves and taking the pestilence elixir and say, go ahead, members, it's safe. I'm telling you, friends. And the also application, don't miss it. When Sunday rest become the law of the land, will pastors even among us, sad to say, will world leaders and also Babylonian pastors also abjure God's seventh day Sabbath and receive the mark of the beast and tell people, look, nothing happened to me. Go ahead. But do you know what would transpire next? When they receive the mark of the beast and say, hey, nothing happened, go ahead. Keep Sunday. Abjure the Sabbath. You want to be able to buy and sell, right? You want to be able to travel, right? The seven last plagues will descend. Just as when Eve sinned, nothing apparently happened right away. But what happened when Adam sinned? Do you see it, friends? All right, let's move on. Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 4, we are told that Satan tasted of the fruit, the forbidden fruit. Satan tasted sin. Don't miss this point. Satan tasted the forbidden fruit. Satan tasted sin. And what was Satan's response afterward? He says, sin is good. He persuaded Eve. Eve partook. Then Adam partook. Eve yielded to temptation. Go with me to John chapter 8. Is that point clear? Don't miss that. John chapter 8. The Bible says in verse 52 of John chapter 8. It says, watch carefully. It says, then said the Jews unto Jesus. Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. The point I want you to catch is Christ's words. If a man, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste. I'm giving you a parody, application from the word taste. If a man keep my sins, he will never taste death. What happened to Adam and Eve in Eden? 
they did not keep God saying, what happened next? They tasted of death. But who persuaded them? It was Satan through his, uh, his, his best actor in the field, <laughs> the serpent. Satan tasted of the forbidden fruit and said, it's good. Go ahead and tasted it. I'm telling you, friends, if Adam and Eve did not yield to temptation, we would not have been in this misery today. But look at the juxtaposition. The Bible says Jesus tasted, taste, he tasted of death. And what was Christ's response? Death. And what is the fruit, the root of death? Sin. For the wages of sin is death. Christ did not sin. But Christ tasted of death. Why? He became sin for us. Took our sins. And Christ tasted of death. What was Christ's response? Death is not good. Death is not something to desire. And Christ said, shun sin, shun death, the second death. Hebrews chapter 2. Are these points clear, my friends? Hebrews chapter 2, the Bible says in verse 9, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower, watch carefully, a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. He was crowned with glory and honor. And that he, Jesus, by the grace of God, should taste, what friends? Should taste death for every man. And verse number 14, verse number 18 says, Christ tasted of death for what purpose? To give us victory over sin. So we don't have to taste the second death from which no man will return. All right, I want to get to a certain nostrum in the Bible, elixir in the Bible. In Matthew 27, put this down in the chat. In Matthew 27 and verse number 34, the Bible says, while Christ was on the cross, the Bible says he was, he was feeling pain. And what did they give Christ to taste? To drink they gave him vinegar to drink but the Bible tells us that Jesus when he tasted the vinegar that bitter portion he rejected it he refused it why in the book the desire of ages put it down page 761 paragraph 2 it says that portion would have be clouded the mind of Christ. In other words, that potion, that so-called panacea, they gave to Christ when they thought he was sick. They thought, oh, friends, I'm not being facetious. When they thought he was uh, uh, in, in, in anguish, it was something unhealthy for his body. He refused it. Once he tasted it, once he knew it was unhealthy, what a quintessential savior we have in Jesus. He tasted something to tell us it's not good sin. And the fruits of sin right down in the chat room. Come on. Safe to serve international. Those of you who are live in the forum in the chat right now. Psalm 34 verse number 8 says, Oh, taste and see. What word am I working with? taste oh taste and see that the lord is good amen blessed is the man that puts his trust in god and not in satan and satan's solutions to combat climate change and pestilences next point and once we taste of christ it is sure it is known publicly that we have tasted of Christ as we shun sin. What forms of sin? Malice, unforgiveness, grudge, covetousness, guile in our mouths. Go to 1 Peter. Put it down. 1 Peter 
chapter 2, amen. Verse number 3, it says, If so be we have tasted that the Lord is gracious, we must lay aside, verse 1, malice, will you, friends? Guile, will you? Hypocrisies, will you? Envies, will you? Lay aside all evil speakings. Put that down. Will you, my friends? We have come to midday power surge, will you? And Christ is only going to save those who have no guile in their mouths. Revelation 14, verse 1 to verse 5. We have the taste of that which is good, Jesus, and not of that which is bad. Wait a minute. Put this scripture down. Colossians, yes. Chapter 2, verse 21, the Bible says, Touch not, amen. Taste not, amen. Handle not. Let me close. Hebrews, chapter 6. Verse 4, verse 4 through verse 6 says, If we have once been enlightened with present truth, if we have once tasted of Christ's forgiveness, Christ's righteousness, if we go back into sin, we crucify Jesus afresh. It's a high possibility we will grieve the Spirit of God and will not find confession, not find repentance. One statement in closing, friends, yield not to temptation. Don't taste of that which is good and go back into the same sins. It's time to get victory lest you crucify Christ afresh. And then will be the words, if they shall fall away, it's going to be impossible to renew them again unto repentance. Impossible for them to be saved if they have once tasted and become rebellious, retrograding back into sin. Retrograding into sin. Send in your prayer requests, my friends. The song, Hillary. Lead them not into temptation? Yes. The song I will play, yield not to temptation. Why? Yielding is sin. But what if Satan brings out, rolls out his best actors on the media, promoting sin, and that which goes against physical health, mental health, spiritual health, yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. The choice is mine, the choice is yours. I won't tell you what to do. Let's go.